Buy an unlocked Intel 4th Gen Core i7 or Core i5 processor and get a free copy of Rome 2 Total War. Click now to learn more. With all the talk lately about uh, using PCs as consoles, whether it's with a Windows operating system or with SteamOS, there has been quite a lot of attention given to very small gaming optimized cases that are also capable of holding a pretty impressive amount of hardware. So this, my friends, is actually a pre-production unit of one of the ones that people are particularly excited about. This is the Still Silverstone Raven RVZ01, and I apologize for all the fingerprints all over it. It's because I've actually already done a build inside the thing. So we'll start with the accessories here. You get a few, actually you get three of these handy dandy little magnetic fan filters. Silverstone is a strong believer in the idea of having positive pressure inside the case with filtered intakes because what that means is dust is filtered on the intake and then because you have positive pressure inside it is passively being exhausted everywhere else so dust cannot accidentally be sucked into the case so we've got one of these for my top fan and then I only needed one additional one for the bottom fan right here but it does come with a third all right, so then let's finish off the accessories. We've got, actually the accessories are kind of neat. We have a little uh, four pin, two other more different, two four pins fan adapter. So that's for those dual fans on the bottom. You can see there's an extra PCI bracket because I already built in it. There's a GPU support bracket. That's actually kind of clever. I just took it out because I didn't really, I didn't really think I needed it. I just have a GTX 670 in there. And then we've, ah, this is actually kind of neat. So check it out. We have a Raven logo here on the front, but you can actually pop that bad boy off and you can run this guy in either a vertical configuration or a horizontal configuration. So it comes with one that's curved like that. Hopefully you guys can see that and pop that on there. And then it is meant to be run this way. So it comes with optional feet. You can either use the large feet. So they're all conveniently labeled, labeled back right, uh, front right, front left, all these kinds of things. And you pop these into the little things here. So the whole thing sits on nice little rubber feet or it comes with a different set of rubber feet. There you go. Just your standard sticky rubber feet that you can put on the bottom if you want to run it in a horizontal desktop mode. You also get all the screws you need to install your system, but of course a lot of them aren't in there anymore because I already did that. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy open. Oh no, I guess let's show a view of the uh, sort of the outside first. So here you're going to see ventilation on the left hand side. All right. Here you will see ventilation on the right hand side. Silverstone's Raven series is known for breaking new ground as well as for uh, excellent ventilation, creative ventilation sometimes. Here we are going to find a very, very small fan that looks like a 60 millimeter. I don't remember noticing that when I was, ah yeah, that's from, ha ha, it's from the SFX power supply. So there's your power supply intake as well as two more fan slots, one of which is occupied by a slim 120 millimeter fan that is feeding airflow directly to the graphics card underneath it. We find at the front two USB 3.0 ports, front audio ports, as well as reset and power switches, and finally a slim uh, DVD drive. So you can, those have gotten a lot less expensive in the last few years here, so it's become somewhat of a viable option. At the back, we see a bit of a unique I.O. configuration. This is actually my first time using a PCI Express riser card. So in order to achieve this half height form factor and yet have a full height graphics card, you can put up to a GTX Titan in here, no problem. They have actually actually run a riser, which you're going to see out of the PCI Express 16X slot on the board, so you can install the graphics card sideways. That's how many of those boutique systems, like the iBuyPower Revolt, are achieving this same feat of fitting a very, very cool system into a very small place. So on the top, you see I actually accidentally unplugged that 120 millimeter fan as I was taking the system apart. So this one right here sits directly over top of my CPU area, so it is providing nice, fresh air to not only the CPU right here, but also to my VRM modules as well as to my memory modules, which are hidden away down there. I like the way that cable management is done in this case. So the power supply itself is actually located over here in the front. It's actually a modular power supply in there, but I should try to, I should start taking it apart for you guys so you can see how the whole thing fits together. But the power supply is over here, which means that all your cables either snake through here to your, uh, to your graphics card. They go here to your SSDs, so you can actually put two two and a half inch SSDs right here. Uh, there's the optical drive bay is actually under here. Yep, so under here, so you can run another one there. And then you can also put additional SSDs here 
on this piece right here, as well as here if you had an SSD instead of a hard drive, if I recall correctly. I could be forgetting something though. It was actually a few days ago that I built this thing. So let's start taking it apart. This will be a new way of doing a case unboxing for me. I'm using a Fantex cooler there, although you could use a stock Intel LGA 1150 cooler if you wanted. Right now I'm not aware of any ITX LGA 2011 cooler. So the highest end configuration you'll be going with in here will be a Core i7 4770K and then that could be paired with as high-end a single graphics card as you could possibly fit. All right, so we can pop this baby off. I'm gonna show you the PCI Express 16X riser right here. So it's actually a hard PCB, so it's a, it's a solid PCB, and then that has an additional riser card plugged into it here, but we're gonna, we're gonna have to release the PCI Express lock here, and we're gonna pull this riser card out first to take this baby apart. So there we go, we released it there. Come on out, come on out, little guy. Come on out, little guy. There we go. Good job, little guy. Okay, sorry, I'm done that now. All right, so I'm going to undo this SSD because this is also quite quite attached indeed. So that reveals how the graphics card goes in there. So there's a series of, I, I can't imagine that that was the most efficient way to do this, but there's a series of two more riser cards, maybe the finished product. This is an engineering sample. We'll have a, a single piece there, but the graphics card plugs in there. That support brace I showed you before goes on like this. So you can basically adjust it to pretty much whatever spacing you want. You can throw that on there, it locks in place, and then you put a screw in there and a screw in the top in it. It holds it, it's more of a concern if you were gonna ship the case somewhere as opposed to if you were just gonna build it and then, and then use it in one place the way a normal person would. You can see that there's actually quite a bit of, uh, of length here. So while you wouldn't necessarily be able to install something like an ASUS GTX 780 DirectCU2 due to the additional height, Actually, that might even fit. That, that'd, be pretty, that'd be pretty borderline though. Um, you can definitely handle the additional length just fine. And then there's something else that I actually decided not to do for my particular build, but uh, you can liquid cool the thing. So you can actually put a dual rad down here, liquid cool the graphics card, liquid cool the CPU, and then it has integrated mounting points for a DDC pump. So that's a popular liquid cooling, like DIY grade pump, and you would what is it stuck on? There we go. And you would mount that to this cross brace right here instead of mounting an SSD here. So that's phenomenally cool. Good thinking Silverstone. They really are, um, they really do push things forward in terms of good compact design. I mean, we've seen this uh, with the Fortress series, their ITX Fortress in particular, I think is outstanding. All right, so now that's that side. Let's go ahead and pull out this hard drive cage so I can show you guys how all that went in there. All right, I've removed the screws. Sorry, to, to be clear, there were two screws on either side. I would like to show you guys how the cable management works here before I pull the whole thing out though. So you can see the front panel connectors are over here and I was actually able to, with a little bit of cramming, uh, get those to go around in front of the power supply and hard drive cage right here. And then I was able to make very good use of the space here in order to make sure that the CPU area stayed quite clear. You can also see uh, my 24 pin and eight pin motherboard connectors have been installed in a very tight space. So we're gonna go ahead and try to Come on, you can do it. There we go, all right. So I can show you guys how that all worked in here. We've actually got six SATA ports on this uh, P8 Z80, or uh, Z87i Deluxe motherboard from Asus rather. Although I'm using a right angle connector here. That was just stupid. I just grabbed the first SATA cables that I could find and sort of routed them over the RAM like that. Don't do that. Anyway, let's go ahead and pull this baby out. So first you install, uh, Silverstone has excellent user manuals and they need them because you have to do the build in a specific order, otherwise it just plain won't work. You have to install the power supply before the hard drive and then you have to install that whole thing in there. So anyway, you can see the SFX power supply that has an extension cord that runs from the back of the case into the power on on the power supply. So I'll just show you guys where that is at the back of the case there. And uh, so that runs all the way around the outside of the case, actually in a very uh, tidy manner. And then the hard drive just kind of, well, it screws on there. I think that's pretty much it. So that, my friends, is the RVZ01, which we're using for our internal Steam machine. It actually has SteamOS installed on it already, so I'm gonna have to put this thing back together now. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and overview of what I think is one of the most unique, and uh, it's an excellent DIY option if you don't wanna buy 
one of those pre-done super compact machines and uh, it's very reasonably priced as well. So thank you for checking out this unboxing. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment and tell us what you thought of this uh, new approach to case unboxing where we actually unbuild the system that we put in it. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.